It was during our morning worship this last Tuesday at 7.10 that uh, Brother Franz breathed his last breath. He died Tuesday, December 22nd, 1992. And uh, in harmony with uh, 1 Corinthians 15.52, the time came for Brother Franz to have been raised up by Jehovah's miracle of resurrection to incomparable, incorruptible life in heaven. So he is living in the time of a great personal victory over death. And we indeed rejoice with him. So we're glad to welcome his relatives, special guests, and over 6,000 of us of the International Bethel family in uh, New York and Canada. So it's fitting that we open our special session with prayer, and uh, we'll be led by one who has known brother friends from childhood uh, for about 70 years. So we'd like to call on Brother Milton Henschel, the Vice President of our society, to offer the prayer, and shall we all stand. Father in the heavens, we are certainly blessed to be able to be your servants in this time. What great love you have always shown for those who love you and the kindness that you have shown us is such an encouragement to us. We see that uh, you provided your son in the great act of love and through him there is the way to overcome the great enemy, death. We thank you for his ransom sacrifice and uh, in this provision <clears throat> we find a feeling of a great victory as uh, we share with the brother friends and others who have received their reward for faithful service. We know that it is a wonderful privilege to be your witnesses and to bear your name and what a privilege it is to reach uh, incorruptibility, immortality and have the position of association with the ones who are already in heaven. Our faith shows us these things. So we are pleased tonight that we can be here. We ask you to bless this occasion and help us to continue to rejoice in the victory our brother Franz has received. We know that this is your doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. So may you go with us as we meet here tonight and your blessing be upon the speaker, Brother Schroeder. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this evening, this is uh, indeed a happy occasion to join in with Brother Franz in celebrating his victory. And we, as uh, the few of us who are the anointed ones, hope to see him again someday. And the others of the great crowd are here as well-wishers for an eternity of a happy future. So on this occasion, it's proper to uh, recall memories of things that happened in connection with Brother Franz's ministry. He really has touched the lives of every one of us here. And uh, how did he do this? He was a small statured man, similar to the Apostle Paul, 1900 years ago. Yet like Paul, he was used powerfully by the means of Jehovah God's Spirit. He lived for 99 years, 3 months, and 20 days. And he almost reached 100, the age that it is said was that of uh, also the Apostle John. So we want to present this evening a profile of his life course. In all these past many years, Brother Franz has made remarkable contributions, sharing in the spiritual advancement of Jehovah's people in these last days. We have a word portrait 
rendered by a, a friendly newspaper man and the setting is 1984 so that's uh, about eight years ago as many weekends a year as his health and travel schedule permit a short natalie dressed man with an easy smile a slight midwest twang and lively blue eyes calls on a few brooklyn heights neighbors invariably and politely he introduces himself as a christian worker or as a jehovah's witness he is frederick w franz who is 90 years old and more to the point leader of 2.3 million Jehovah's Witnesses around the world. And that's eight years ago. His weekend forays are roughly the equivalent of Pope John Paul going into the streets of Rome to plead with potential converts. But among witnesses, there is nothing extraordinary about Francis' daughter door ministry. It is something practiced by all witnesses. Legally, he's the president of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, Incorporated, and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, the two legal corporate entities of the society, and a member of the 15-man governing body that oversees every aspect of witness life. He lives and works simply. His ninth floor office in the nerve center of the world headquarters in Brooklyn Heights is plain. Home is a fairly modest apartment nearby, and he eats in one of the society's six family-style dining rooms, where he often leads the traditional breakfast discussion. Franz is a convert who was born September 12, 1893, in Covington, Kentucky. He was a 20-year-old sophomore at the University of Cincinnati planning to become a Presbyterian minister when his brother Albert sent him some tracts from the Watchtower Society. Deciding that the Jehovah's Witnesses' interpretation of the Bible was the only correct one, France, France quit college to join them ordained a full-time missionary worker or pioneer. Later he moved to the world headquarters in 1920. So we admit this is rather an accurate, interesting uh, description of Brother Franz as a man. But now we are primarily interested in him as a spiritual person, a new personality. He was baptized November 30th, 1913. That's one year before Jesus Christ was enthroned in the heavens. The important 1914 year. He was one of Jehovah's anointed ones. Hence, he was a true Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. He served as a member of the body of Christ and partook of the memorial emblem. He was born of water and spirit, born again. He became adopted as a spiritual son of God, destined for heavenly life. He has served as a faithful witness for 79 and a half years, practically eight decades as a preacher, minister. He is a member of the spiritual Israel of God. And how many number of them? 144,000, the Bible shows. He was a member of the Brooklyn Bethel family since 1920, or more than 72 years. He uh, was president of the Watchtower Society since 1977, and served for 15 years and six months. And it's interesting to note that from 1942 onward, when Brother brother died in January 1942. From 1942 to 1977, he worked in cooperation with brother Nathan Homer Knorr. And they were 
a solid team that shared in great works in those years, which brought about worldwide expansion. He was one of the governing body of the society over those many years. And uh, he was one of the John class. What does that mean? That means that he was alive during the Lord's Day. And when is the Lord's Day? It begins in 1914. So he was alive participating in this remarkable historic period of time. In 1919, Jehovah's people had a marvelous deliverance, a deliverance from Babylon's captivity. And Brother uh, Franz took uh, a lead in all this. Since 1919, there have been exciting times for the restoration of spiritual truths. And uh, the faithful and discreet slave class was very busy in dispensing spiritual food at the proper time. And you know, the Brother Friends is the last living official in the link with the Russell era. So here we are now in a further period of time in connection with Jehovah's wonderful work in the earth. He's also one of the big trees of righteousness that the Bible prophecies speak about. And Isaiah 61, 3, there um, the prophecy says to assign to those mourning over Zion. Before 1919, Jehovah's anointed ones went through great troubles of persecution and sorrows. And uh, eight of them were in prison in Atlanta. Georgia. Oh, it was a time of mourning, mourning that they went through, but now there was to be a change to assign to those mourning over Zion to give them a headdress instead of ashes, the oil of exaltation. Instead of mourning, a mantle of praise. Instead of the downhearted spirit, they must be called big trees of righteousness, the planting of Jehovah for Jehovah to be beautified. So Brother Franz lived in that period of time that began in 1919 to this very day where we see this great transformation taking place and we're in this time of great exaltation and joy. And the Watch Star shows that from Pentecost CE 33, Jehovah has planted big trees, anointed ones, in the spiritual estate of his dedicated people. They were stalwart, steadfast, immovable, anointed ones that loved righteousness. So he's had big trees on this earth now for over 1900 years and still has some in our day. So Brother Franz has given much spiritual shade of refreshment and fruitage in connection with his long period of service here. His life story, entitled Looking Back Over 93 Years of Living, was published in the Watchtower of May 1, 1987. Another interesting thing to observe is that he served as an underpriest in Jehovah's spiritual temple in Jehovah's cleansed spiritual temple. The temple was cleansed in 1918. And uh, uh, many religious false doctrines were further put away. So he served under the high priest, Jesus Christ, ever since the temple was cleansed to this day. So he interestingly served 75 years as an underpriest in Jehovah's spiritual temple. And it's interesting that the Apostle John only served 70 years as an underpriest. But um, this is just an interesting observation. So this has been a period of spiritual enlightenment with flashing forth of truths of great brilliance 
and the New World Translation became available to bring further enlightenment to Jehovah's people in every part of the earth. Brother Franz was always wisely guided by Bible principles. One of them was, uh, for example, always seek the approval of God rather than the approval of men. That was a policy he followed in many discussions. For example, in the restoration of the divine name, the clergy and many so-called wise men uh, we uh, failed to recognized the divine name and were against its being used in Bible work. But uh, the approval of God was the important thing. This is the time for his name to be heralded throughout the earth. Another principle was to try to express the truth from God's word, the Bible, as clearly and consistently as possible. So, uh, internal supporting evidence from the Bible is that which is sought in order to establish doctrines and views. And another one, there's no benefit in self-deception. So, if there are errors, adjustments have to be made. Corrections, uh, when necessary, for example, our understanding of Romans 13.1 had to be adjusted. So there was no benefit in continuing in a wrong view. Brother Franz always sought to exalt Jehovah's name and sovereignty. For example, he gave the opening prayer at the 92nd Gilead graduation on March 1, 1990. So that's still this same year. And incidentally, that was his last public appearance, other than talking privately to us. So he generally tried to have an original opening expression when he offered a prayer for a large congregation like the 5,000 that were assembled there uh, in the Jersey City Assembly Hall. And... Uh, you notice how beautifully he opened that last public prayer by saying originally, the magnificent one. That's how he addressed God for that uh, outstanding prayer. And how fitting that is, the magnificent one. A longtime friend in the truth from Canada recently visited Mother Friend. The visit was June 7th, 1991. And this is what he remarked and wrote down in connection with his hour's visit with Brother Franz. Brother Franz is something of a legend among Jehovah's Witnesses. A remarkable Bible scholar, an original and enthusiastic speaker, and a much-loved man of deep faith and courage. He is a small man, still slim, and neatly dressed. He has always been careful with his health, and has exercised and walked daily. His skin is remarkably fresh and unwrinkled, like that of a much younger man. He has no aches or pain. So there is a accurate description of Brother Franz in his uh, 99th year. So now, uh, here, he now reached his 100th year, like the Apostle John, it is thought, was about 100 when he wrote uh, the three letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Did Brother Franz give any counsel and help in these last year or two of his life? During the last several months, Brother Franz confined himself largely to his apartment, where upon appointment he would converse with his secretaries and members of the governing body. We had to go to him. He continued to render expert spiritual counsel and guidance in this way. 
special appreciation is also being expressed at this time to uh, Dr. Doris, Dara Barnes and the other doctors and nurses who rendered fine assistance to him. Also to the several 20-year-old brothers, unmarried, who took turns to give him aid and assistance night and day in such a loving, devoted way. Following are some experts, some excerpts, rather, of expressions from these fine young brothers, whom we might say were Brother Francis' spiritual grandsons, his nephew helpers for the last few years. One said, I developed an attachment for Brother Franz to that of a great grandfather. In the evenings we would enjoy pleasant conversation on spiritual matters, yet he had a sense of humor. Another, two things stick out in my mind. First, was his loyalty and obedience to Jehovah. He was ever attributing his successes and good things to Jehovah. Second, he said, stick to the organization no matter what may come. He was always eager for Bible information. Another one of these brothers and wrote, I cherish many fond memories in tending Brother Franz. He made people feel important to him and Jehovah's organization. His prayers were so heartfelt that it has helped me to improve my prayers to Jehovah. Brother Franz had a tremendous love and appetite for God's Word, the Bible which I admire. Another one said, he always made us feel like a true part of his life. He was patient and treated us with utmost respect. We felt so humble being with him. He epitomized what it meant to love Jehovah. Still another one said, there are seven all together, I can testify that Brother Franz had a beautiful Christian personality. One thing, and one I will try to imitate. The most important thing about Brother Franz was his deep hunger for Jehovah's Word, the Bible. From dawn till dusk, he continued to feed his mind on it. Yet each time he heard it, he lived it in his mind. He found contentment in serving his God. He clothed himself in humility and good manners at all times. And the final one. At his desk in his office or in his room, he liked to have the curtains wide open. For despite his blindness, he could appreciate a sunny day. As the curtains were drawn, he would often say, Fiat Lux, which he would then translate from Latin, Let there be light, in a loud, cheerful voice. I recall that uh, he would listen intently to some of the deeper Bible tapes, such as on genealogy. Ezekiel or the minor prophets the most genealogies found them interesting as to his heavenly hope he once admitted it's a frightening thought really to appear before the person of God himself so those are the thoughts that went through his mind he enjoyed to listen to recordings in Spanish German and even to readings from the Latin Vulgate. Occasionally he would say in Hebrew, Shalom, as a greeting. So aren't these beautiful words 
that helped to impress these young, seven young brothers who served him, night and day, you might say. Brother Franz was a world traveler. He has visited and served most of the major branches in the, in the world. Having given lectures at the Gilead Missionary School, he was keenly interested in the lives of the missionaries and wanted to see them in action in the field. And uh, he would also share with them in the field service occasionally because he could speak Spanish and he visited many of these Spanish countries. And he was associated with the uh, first Spanish congregation here in Brooklyn. And we're glad to see uh, many of the uh, Spanish brothers here this evening. Brother Franz was a speaker at several significant conventions. For example, take the important Cleveland Convention held September 18 to 20 in 1942. Why was that significant? Well, at that time, that was the middle point of World War II, and it looked as if the Axis powers were going to win and the democracies were losing, and uh, some of the brothers thought, well, now uh, the witness work is going to come to an end. Uh, we're drifting into Armageddon. And so there was a great question, should we now stop? Well, Brother Franz gave that significant talk, which was called the go-ahead signal. The talk itself was entitled, The Only Light based on Isaiah 60, the 60th chapter, the whole chapter. But according to King James, verse 1 says, uh, opens up by saying, Arise, shine. So Brother Franz has shouted this out, Arise, shine. The go-ahead signal is to keep shining by preaching. And so a further new period of witness work began in 19... In 42 and then 43. And as a matter of fact, it was this talk and the further one that Brother um, Nor gave on um, peace can it last? So they were looking forward to a peace period after World War II. That's rather significant. Only Jehovah's Witnesses seemed to know that the war was going to finally end three years later. And that's why the Gilead School was organized in, in 1943 to help out in this a great worldwide work. Another convention that he played a significant part in was the Theocracy's Increase Assembly, the largest convention ever held, excuse me, this is the one in 1950, at Yankee Stadium. And uh, Brother Franz, and now maybe many of us older ones, remember this outstanding talk at the Yankee Stadium which was an eight day convention I, when you look back now from our modern three day conventions or four day conventions we had conventions for eight days morning sessions, afternoon sessions and evening sessions and we were richly spiritually fed in a powerful way but at this convention he discussed Isaiah 32.1 and we all remember in his discussion and build up on the princes and the wonderful work that uh, they were doing so finally Brother Franz said in great strong high pitched voice and I was on the platform with him at that time and still remember it vividly now he said would this international assembly be happy to know that here, tonight, in our midst, there are a number of prospective princes of the new earth. A lot of people didn't hear the word perspective. <laughs> but a tremendous and sustained reaction, applause, and otherwise, he couldn't go on for several minutes. Great enthusiasm and interest. The uh, a large number of people that were at this convention the peak attendance finally came to a quarter of a million, our largest convention ever held. But now that's not all. 
We now come to still another example. This is the 1958 Yankee Stadium Convention. Oh, I see, I made a mistake. 1950 wasn't our largest one, but 1958 was. There's where we had a quarter of a million. And we had the Yankee Stadium and Polo Ground, the greatest convention. And incidentally, the New York Times that mentioned about Brother Franz's death referred to this convention of a quarter of a million in 1958. And there, Brother Franz talked on Isaiah 55, 1 to 4. And the Watchtower report of that convention says that he electrified his audience. So now let's transfer ourselves to Yankee Stadium, Tuesday, July 29, 1958. Let us keep our undivided attention to what is certain to be a talk that will steal all of us, Barry France. Hey there, all you thirsty ones, come to the water, and the ones that have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, buy wine and milk, even without money and without price. Why do you people keep paying out money for what is not bread? And why is your toil for what results in no satisfaction? Listen intently to me! And hear what is good. And let your soul find its exquisite delight in fatness itself. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, and your soul shall keep alive. And I will readily conclude with you people an indefinitely lasting covenant respecting the loving kindnesses to David that are faithful. Look, as a witness to the national groups I have given him as a leader and commander to the national groups. That was Jehovah God calling, inviting the thirsty and hungry ones what was there to thirst and hunger for? A righteous king, a good government in fulfillment of the covenant that Jehovah God concluded with King David. Never was there a covenant more important than this covenant made by God himself with a man David. So we see the great issue back there in 1958 was government, and you no doubt remember the Revelation Climax book mentioned that even to this day, the greatest issue is government. And we see that every day in the newspaper. Everybody's dissatisfied with their governments. So these were three thrilling experiences among the many, many that Brother Franz had during his long ministry. And we also want to acknowledge that we have received fax messages. We used to receive telegrams, but now <laughs> fax is the thing. So our branches practically all over the world have sent in beautiful messages. I wish we had time to present some of them, one particularly from Japan, where Brother uh, Franz had visited a few years back. So then, brothers, Brother Franz was one of the anointed ones, as we've seen, and what are some of the wondrous benefits that the anointed ones receive, receive by being faithful, even to the end? Well, the Bible refers to them as conquerors, and they're allowed to eat of the tree of life in the heavenly paradise. This is immortal life in the presence of Jehovah. It's also spoken of as, of as the crown of life. The crown of life is immortality, 
not touched by any second death. And then uh, they share also in the hidden manna. We remember the manna in the typical Ark of the Covenant stayed fresh for hundreds and hundreds of years in spite of the heat in the, the Sinai region. This hidden uh, manna is an imperishable provision that's tied in with their resurrection and incorruption. Then the revelation also shows they're given a white pebble and this is something very special. It allows them to be admitted to an honored place in heaven at the Lamb's marriage, which is a great universal event still ahead. And uh, they have a new name put on that pebble. And this identifies uh, an intimate position of royal service. Then uh, it's interesting to know that uh, these that have been resurrected since 1918 of the anointed ones will share in the shepherding the peoples with an iron rod, break in pieces these nations. And so, uh, brother friends, will be sharing in that too. That will be leading to Armageddon in this great day of Jehovah. And uh, these are also given the morning star which uh, Christ Jesus himself gives to his anointed fellows and shows a, a closest intimate relationship that these have. And then they're arrayed in white outer garments, not a blot or spot to be seen, and uh, their names are sure in the book of life and they managed to keep the Christian identity and righteousness and their name therefore is indelibly written in the book of life. They've entered the open door, obeyed, enjoyed further deeds of service. They've passed the hour of test, which is on now. And uh, they've been made a pillar in the temple of God. They are an immovable support of Jehovah's spiritual temple arrangement. So these are all conquerors, and uh, they are great supporters of the kingdom government, and they are seated on their thrones reserved for them. So here we have the Bible description of the rewards that come. And we know that Ecclesiastes 7, 1, it says a name is better than good oil. How true that principle is. A name, a record. And uh, the one that we've examined in connection with Brother Franz is a big one. Many items, all characterized by faithfulness. So a name is better than good oil, and the day of death, than the day of one's being born. How true that was, my brother, friends. Look at the record he had now in his 90 or 100th year compared to the time when he was born and the sort of a zero uh, record in God's sight. Jehovah is the great rewarder. Without faith is it impossible to please him well, for he that approaches God must believe that he is and that he becomes the rewarder of those earnestly seeking him. So Jehovah disappoints no one who's performed deeds of goodness in connection with his name and his work. Jehovah is the great God of all comfort. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of tender mercies and the God of all comfort. Other comforting texts that uh, refer to the anointed ones, that those who are relatives uh, and the dear friends of the deceased always rejoice in uh, uh, thinking over again. Prove yourself faithful 
even to death and I'll give you the crown of life that's always set before those of the anointed look I tell you a sacred secret we shall not all fall asleep in death but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye during the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised up incorruptible and we shall be changed for this is which is mortal must put on immortality and then again happy are the dead who die in union with the Lord from this time onward yes says the spirit let them rest from their labors for the things they did go right with them so brothers and sisters here we have recounted some of the deeds and exploits of brother Frederick W. Franz and many of us enjoyed many days of fellowship and uh, working with him and we know that Jehovah must have this marvelous uh, series of blessings as part of the reward uh, that uh, comes to him but above all he always sought to honor and worship Jehovah God that was uppermost in his mind and so we do well also to imitate him in just this way so this brings to a close our gathering together especially this evening to recount uh, the deeds of brother friends and we know that uh, the work is not finished the grand uh, expanding organization now with more than 4.4 million uh, associates and workers is going to grandly, uh, grandly roll on even further because this is the day when Jehovah's spirit is upon his people and that's mighty that's strong and we're missing we're serving rather the magnificent one the magnificent God of the universe our grand creator so now it's fitting that we have a closing prayer and by one who has worked with brother friends now for more than 68 years so we'd like we you know, like to all stand and call on Brother Carl Klein to represent us in prayer. Jehovah God, you the universal sovereign, the most high, our judge, lawgiver, and king, matchless, peerless, incomparable, unique in so many ways, with hearts full of thankfulness and praise to you, we come to you at this time, yet with mixed emotions. We mourn the loss of a dear friend we've known so long, who has been so encouraging and so helpful to us, and we know that no one can take his place in our hearts. On the other hand, we have reason to rejoice. He's gone home to his reward, and what blessings, what joys were awaiting him when he entered the heavenly courts there to see in person you the Most High, and your Son, and the angels, and the faithful servants that in the apostolic times and in modern times, the past presidents of Brother Russell, Rutherford, and more, and to associate with these, truly the cause for rejoicing. At this time we're reminded of the words of Solomon, it's better to go into the house of mourning than into the banqueting house. And this has certainly been true this evening. We have greatly benefited by having called our attention the example of such a faithful, outstanding servant of yours, unselfish, zealous, humble, with such good abilities and all completely dedicated to you and your purposes. And as the Apostle Paul reminds us that we consider those taking the lead who have spoken the word of God to us we see how the example turns out. We should endeavor to imitate them. So we do pray that the fine example that he set 
can inspire all of us to be better imitators than him, and yes, and also better imitators of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do thank you for a wonderful expansion taking place at this time, and we do pray your blessing from all our brothers the wide world over. Same time, remembering we're imperfect, we do pray you forgive us, and we thank you and praise you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name and for your great holy namesake. Amen. Shall we now be seated? We have an announcement we'd like to make. In a half hour, we would like to use this uh, Kingdom Hall for our watchtower study. So we have about a half an hour to have fellowship here. And uh, immediately following the memorial service, there will be a reception for the family members and the many special guests we have and friends, Bethel acquaintances of Brother Franz, who are in attendance from the congregation. Those who wish to attend should see the attendance for direction. The uh, reception, the happy time of reception will be held in the music uh, room of the Towers uh, residence building. So also members of the governing body expect to be present too. And uh, it would be well for all of us who wish to attend to be there by 7.15 and that will free the hall here for our further uh, assembling this evening. So thank you. The special session now is dismissed.